Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle something a little unusual. This is one of the Tempest Legion from the Maker's Cult, and if he bears some resemblance to the Thunder Warriors of Warhammer 40,000 universe, well there's probably a good reason for that. <laughs> it is possible that you can convert these guys, there are some really neat conversion guides out there, but this fella is a 3D print, and I will pop a link to the description where you can find the STL for this fella. If you don't have a printer and you want to get him printed, it's probably worth contacting the Maker's Cult directly to find out about their licensed printers. So this method is pretty much the same as all of the other Horus Heresy painting guides I've done so far, but with a little bit of a twist, because the Thunder Warriors are just... they're cool. They're one of those enduring bits of the 40k, or rather 30k, or even earlier mythos, which I think really ties into the Baroque insanity of the early Imperium. So all of the paints will be listed in the description below, along with the base recipe. Let's get started. So the very first thing I've done is to hit this fella with a spray primer first of black and then of white from above, simulating Xenothal highlighting. This is a little more simple to do if you have an airbrush, but you can do it with a rattle can as you'll see here, Pay no attention to the blue lurking there, I just wanted to have a little play around. Now the idea here is that we'll leave some of the shading intact in those deepest recesses, but the colours we're going to apply will still be nice and vibrant on all the high points of the miniature, which is going to be just perfect. Now we'll move on straight away. The first colour I'm going to apply is going to be some Cadian flesh tone to his skin. Now this is because it's going to be easier to do this now than to paint in his blue armour and try and avoid hitting that with the skin colour. If you find it easier to flip them upside down and attack them from a different angle, I normally find that's the simplest way to get under these marine chins. Or Iron Warrior, uh, Thunder Warrior, goodness me. <laughs> now that takes barely any work. I'm going to move on now and we're going to paint in the armour colour. Now if you want to, you could use here the primer spray for this, because I'm going to use the ultramarine blue from the army painter. Now this is a little bit lighter than McCrag Blue. It's a similar sort of richness. It's very nice. It actually reminds me of the old Ultramarine Blue from the Citadel line. But because it's that bit lighter, uh, I think it's going to give us a better result, so we don't have to do a lot of work with it later on. I've watered this down, maybe a couple of drops of paint to a little bit of water, so it is going to go on fairly thin. So I'm going to apply this first of all over a shoulder pad to show you what I mean. And I may have thinned that down a little too much. Oh no, that should be fine. What we'll do is apply this first in one coat, and probably a little bit more on my brush at a time. And I thoroughly recommend pick an area and paint it to completion, rather than trying to just splatter this over large areas of the model at once. So pick an arm or a shoulder pad or what have you, and paint the whole thing before applying this paint to another area. And you'll find you keep much better control of what you're doing that way. You'll see that settles a little better as it dries. We are still going to need to apply a second coat to get the best result here, but I'm not too concerned about that. Areas that are going to be metal or silver or what have you later, you can just paint over them, it won't matter. What is going to matter is making sure all of your blue stuff is, well, blue. Now that first coat, once it's dried, is going to look something like this. And depending on the style you're going for, you might like that. Um, I do want mine to be a little more solid though, so I'm going to apply a second coat of that ultramarine blue. Uh, here is probably the good reason why picking up the primer, if you do want to paint a lot of these guys, is going to be a good idea. But ah, uh, there we go. That's, that's more like it. After your second coat, you're going to have something that looks like this. Now from here, I'm going to leave it and carry on, because I know what I'm going to do later, and there's going to be a few little bits and pieces to help modulate some of this colour. If you do want a more solid finish, then you can pick out some of the flatter areas, thin down that ultramarine blue a little bit more, and get a very cool result. But we're going to move straight on, I am going to start painting some of the metallic details. Now you'll see, under his legs there, he's actually got uh, plate mail, not plate mail, what's the word, chain mail. Uh, so I'm going to use a smaller brush to get to that. But this is gunmetal from the Army Painter, and it covers very well. So I'm going to go straight over his weapons with this, and then I'll swap on down to a smaller brush for the smaller areas. 
When it comes to the leather details, like his gloves and some of the pouches, if he's got any on him, I'm going to use Vallejo's Flat Brown. Now this is a little bit darker than Mornfang Brown. It is my go-to for reddish leather sort of colour, and I think you'll see why. You can use Mornfang Brown quite happily here, if you can't get your hands on this, but I thoroughly recommend it. It is a wonderful colour. For his top knot, I'm going to use Evil Sun Scarlet. And you'll see this covers very well over our nice white primer. If you did want to stick to the Army Painter stuff though, Pure Red here would also work very well, and give you a similar finish to the Ultramarine Blue we used earlier. When it comes to his shades, you could even paint them in with the same red if you wanted to, but I'm going to go for a yellow, because I kind of want to tie it into the trim. So I'm going to use Moon Dust. This is an Army Painter paint. Army Painter acrylic, let's say it that way. And this is a little darker, slightly more saturated than Dawn Yellow. And it just, oh, it's wonderful. I love Moon Dust. And then the last base color we're going to apply is some Retributor Armor. Now I'm using, this is still a size 2 brush. It's basically the same as a medium layer brush. Uh, but when I come to some of the smaller areas, like the finer parts of trim on his armor here, I'm going to swap on down to a small layer brush to do most of that. But these bigger areas, let's give it one coat with this first of all. Now what parts are gold is really up to you. I've gone for bits that are going to add a little bit of visual interest, break up some of the shape of the miniature. And you'll see as well that I have tidied up just a couple of little areas, but for the most part I'm quite happy with that as my base coat's finished. So what I have here, this is the Marine Juice. This is lifted from the Forge World Army Painting Team. It's basically equal parts Lamian Medium, Reichland Flesh Shade, and Nuln Oil. It's a little less dark and maybe a touch more red than Agrax Earthshade, but not as yellow as Seraphim Sapia. I really like it. So I've given it a really good shake, and let's just start applying this over our entire marine. You can be quite generous. And yeah, everywhere. Everywhere. Really work it in. And once you've applied this over the entire Thunder Warrior, I keep calling him a marine. He's not a marine. <laughs> we'll leave, leave this to dry for about half an hour. Now that always works so much better than I expected it to. As you can see, we've got lots of deep shading. That color has come down a little bit, but because we took the time with the couple of coats of Ultramarine's Blue at the start, things like the rivets and the edges of the armor are still that little bit of chalky, uh, got slightly chalky white finish there. And I quite like how that looks. But what we'll do is, ordinarily, I would stop here. You know, for bulk infantry, for a Horus Heresy force, it doesn't need to be any more fancy than this. But, because he's a little bit bigger, let's take a little bit of extra time. So I have some Wild Rider Red, and I am going to highlight some of the parts of his top knot. Just using the edge of my brush, rather than the tip for most of it, to catch those edges and accentuate a little of that detail. If you wanted to, you could go even brighter. Uh, maybe Fire Dragon Bright or something, but Wild Rider Red, I think, is going to give us plenty without having to completely change the color. We'll go on down to a smaller brush and add a few spots of Kislev flesh to his face. What we'll do is highlight his nose, his cheekbones, probably his chin if I can reach that. Using some Scrag Brown we can concentrate on the edges of the leather details. So up around the tops of his gloves, his knuckles and such. And again, this is really in the realm, well that's way too much on my brush, <laughs> this is in the realm of how much you want to apply. If you do want to highlight his shades, like we're reaching the point where I think the diminishing returns of doing too much work are going to start showing up, but a little bit of Screaming Skull will work really well for a highlight on this yellow. Now over his weapons, I am going to apply a layer of Nuln Oil. I want them to be a little darker, a little bit more oily looking than the rest of the silver stuff on his armor. Now this next stage you can do while that Nuln Oil is drying, but I'd say it's a little safer. Just let it dry thoroughly first. What I've got is a little bit of uh, old sponge, something from a blister pack or similar, and some Rhinox hide. What I'm going to do is dip that into the end there, and then either on a bit of kitchen towel or just on my palette, rough that up a little, and I'm going to tap the edge of the base here to get an idea 
of what I'll leave behind. And you see, you get this neat random splodge. So let's do some battle damage. Let's do a little bit of chipping up around the edges of some of the shoulder plates. It's always a good candidate. Up on the knees. And you can do as little or as much of this as you like. I would suggest try not to go overboard. Uh, but it is a very easy way to add a little bit more visual interest to some of these miniatures. And like I mentioned, that will add up very quickly. So what I've got here, this is Kalgar Blue, and this would be what I'd ordinarily use to highlight the armor, if I were going to spend the time to do it. But what I'm going to do instead is just lightly stipple with an old brush, something which doesn't keep a very good point, and just tap around the base towards the bottom edges of some of those areas of chipping. And what that's going to do is give them a slightly more three-dimensional effect, and anywhere where you may have gone a little overboard, like on his thigh here, I can use this to break up some of that shape and make it look a little more reasonable. Now something that adds is quite a lot of texture to what is ordinarily fairly flat armor. I quite like how it looks. You might prefer a slightly less stippled appearance, but that's up to you. Part of the benefit of this is that you can just pick and choose what bits you like. From here, the last thing that I might do would be to either dry brush the weapons with a little bit of Necron compound, or maybe highlight the gold with some Liberator gold, but honestly, I'm not going to. I think at this stage, you don't really need to, but it would look cool if you do. I'm just not going to take it that far myself. What I am going to do is hit him with a matte varnish and pop a base on. Let's get a look at what our Thunder Warrior looks like when he is all complete. And there at last, our Tempest Warrior is complete. And it's worth pointing out, of course, once more, that any of these methods you've seen used today will work just fine on any of the other Heresy-era armors. Although, I do tend to think that this stuff looks best on the Mark III, but that's probably because I'm biased. Iron armor is the coolest armor. So, as always, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my wonderful producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Jimmy, and Rod. Your support lets me do cool stuff like this. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So, thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.